In this video, I will be introducing you to the concept of combinations. In my previous video, I used an example of where we had five people, A, B, C, D, and E, and we had three seats, one, two, and three, seats one, seat two, and seat three, and we had to find the number of different permutations, so the number of different possible arrangements in which these people can sit. And what we got was that in our first seat, there are five possibilities of who can sit in there. And since there are four people left, for each of these five possibilities, there are four more possibilities. And now since there are only three more people left in our, for our third seat, for each of these four possibilities, there are three more possibilities, giving us a total of five times four times three, which is equal to 20 times three, which is 60 permutations or arrangements in which these people are able to sit. Now, another thing that we deduced in our last video was that the equation for permutations where there are n people and there are r chairs is equal to n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. And I won't be going over how I got this. If you are, if this is new to you, then you should watch my previous video on permutations. So anyway, in this video, as I said earlier on, I will be introducing you to the concept of combinations. Now, combinations are slightly different from permutations, and they are in the sense that the order does not matter. Let's look back at our example up here where we have five people A, B, C, D, and E, and three seats. Well, with permutations, we wanted to find all of the different seating arrangements. So with A in the first seat, we could have person B in the second seat and person C in the third seat. And we could also have with A in the first seat, have C B in the second seat and B B in the third seat. So these are two different, these are two different permutations. But the thing is with combinations is that the order does not matter. So the order in which these people are seated does not matter. So in this case, both of these things where A is in the first seat, B is in the second seat, and C is in the third seat, or when A is in the first seat, C is in the second seat, and B is in the third seat, are considered to be the same combination. And that's because the same combination of people are sitting in each of the seats. So we have A, B, and C over here, and over here we also have A, B, and C. So this is the same combination. We could also take an example of, let's say, we have two separate permutations where we have people B, C, and D sitting, or we could have people D, B, and C sitting. And the only difference here is in which chairs are sitting. So person B is in chair one, person C is in chair two, and person D is in chair three. And in the second case, person D is in chair one, person B is in chair two, and person C is in chair three. Now, while these are, once again, different permutations, they are the same combination because in both cases, or persons or people B, C, and D are all sitting. So here we also have persons B, C, and D. So these are both the same combination as, once again, order does not matter when we're dealing with combinations. <clears throat> now, in my video on permutations, I showed you how we came up with this equation. For combinations, coming up with the equation is a bit more difficult, so I've made a separate video on that. And if you're interested, you can reference it. It's not mandatory, but I feel like it's, very in it's a very important thing to understand. So, permutations are expressed in the equation ncr, which we read as n choose r, where in this case we would say that we have n people and r seats. And this gives us, or this function or this equation gives us the total number of people or the total number of combinations with which we can have people be seated. So ncr is given by n factorial divided by n minus r factorial times 
R factorial. So as you can see, if we ignore the R factorial, it's exactly like our permutations combination up above, or permutations expression up above. But in combinations, we divide it by R factorial to get our answer. And once again, if you're curious to see how I got this, or how this is derived, then you should check out my other video on this. So anyway, let's look at another example of a question involving combinations. Or actually, let's look back at this example and try and, solve, try and see how many combinations there are. So we have five people. So n is equal to five. Let's make a box over here. And three seats. So r is equal to three. And we want to find the number, so the number of possible combinations. And we do this, as you probably guessed, by plugging it into our equation. So we get from this n factorial, or in this case, 5 factorial divided by r is equal to 3. So 3 factorial times 5 minus 3 whole factorial, that equals 5 factorial over 3 factorial times, this is, this gives us a value of 2. So 5 factorial is equal to, sorry, let me write this out, 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Divide this by 3 factorial, which is 3 times 2 times 1 and then multiply this by 2 factorial, which is 2 times 1. And we can do a bit of cancelling out. So we see this over here, 3 times 2 times 1, and we see that above as well. These two cross out. What we're left with is 5 times 4 over 2, which gives us an answer of 20 over 2, which is equal to 10. So there are 10 different possible combinations of who sits in the chairs. So once again, when we're finding the number of possible combinations, it doesn't matter who sits in what chair. So an example of different combinations would be to have A, B, and C, or A, B, and D. And since C is not in our second combination, these are separate combinations. Let's move on to another example. Let's I think we've graduated from using chairs now, so we'll talk about a sports team. Let's say that there's a sports team of, let's say, four people, and we have ten people, or actually let's say six people, person A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. That's more than six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six people who are applying to the team. Now, what we want to find out is what are all of the different combinations of who is on the team? And when you think about sports teams, the order in which we pick people doesn't matter. So whether we have A, B, and C on the team or C, B, and A, it basically means the same thing to us. So in this question, now that we know that the order doesn't matter, or the order in which we pick people doesn't matter, we can immediately recognize that we have to use combinations. Combinations. So what is our number value for n? n is equal to 6 because that's the number of players and r gives us a value, or our value for r is 4, which is the number of possible positions on the team. So we have 4 positions on we have four positions available on our team. Now, once again, we want to plug this in. So we have NCR. And just as a quick side note, NCR is read as N choose R. So we're choosing who is on our team using, or we're seeing how many possible choices we have of who can be on the team. So anyway, ncr is equal to n factorial over r factorial times n minus r factorial. Now we just need to plug in our values for n and r. So we have 
6 is our value of n, so 6 factorial divided by r is 4, so 4 factorial times n minus r is 6 minus 4 factorial. And this gives us, or let's actually bring this over here, this is equal to 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by, this is 2 factorial, so 6 minus 4 is 2. 4 factorial gives us 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and 2 factorial gives us 2 times 1 and we're multiplying this and this together. Now one thing which you may recognize is that on the bottom we have 4 factorial or 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and up here we can also box off that same value hence we can cancel them out. This gives us 6 times 5 divided by 2 times 1 or 30 over 2 so there are 15 or this gives and this is equal to 15 so we have 15 possible combinations for our team okay so that's simple enough now just as a quick recap once again com in combinations the order in which we select whatever objects we're looking at does not matter and it's denoted using the equation n c r or n choose r is equal to n factorial divided by r factorial times n min minus r factorial.